hey, not every game can be pretty, but the New Jersey Devils extend their win streak to seven games, and it looks like that they're going to maintain it going forward, especially since these next three games work in their favor. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode, the battle of the two-way play. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Alrighty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So, the New Jersey Devils have extended their win streak to seven games, and they have won 10 of their last 11 matchups. And I'm not trying to jinx anything, and I'm certainly not trying to jump the gun, but the next three games for New Jersey Devils should be somewhat in their favor, because... They have a game against the Ottawa Senators. Then they got a game against the Arizona Coyotes. And then they got a game against the Montreal Canadiens. So it is quite possible that the New Jersey Devils could extend their win streak to 10 games. So for reference, guys, the last time the New Jersey Devils went on a seven-game win streak came back in 2011. The last time that they went on an eight-game win streak was also back in 2011 because that's uh, how long that respective win streak lasted. It lasted eight games. So it's been a while since the New Jersey Devils have won this kind of string of games, and they've done it against respectable competition. But let's talk about this game against the Calgary Flames because while it's nice that they got seven in a row, while it's nice that they've won 10 of their last 11, this was not their best outing. But as proven in the Vancouver Canucks game, the New Jersey Devils have proven Despite not putting up their best effort, they're still very capable of winning. And it's also worth mentioning that we swept the season series against the Calgary Flames in this home-and-home matchup. So just wanted to put that out there. But my initial thoughts of the game was it was quite interesting just because the New Jersey Devils were outshot. Their special teams wasn't really all that good. And it took the New Jersey Devils three tries before they got their first goal of the game. What do I mean by that? Well, the first time that they supposedly scored a goal was thanks to, I wasn't sure if it was Jonas Siegenthaler or Yegor Sharangovich. So Amanda Stein and Ryan Novozinski was saying that Jonas Siegenthaler was the one who would have been hypothetically credited with the goal. However, Bill Spalding on air was saying that it grazed Yegor Sharangovich. I personally thought it was Sharangovich's goal just because I think he was first in the high five line. And look at the replay. I think the puck did touch his uh, jersey just a little bit. So uh, in that first hypothetical sense goal, I think it would have gone to Yegor Sharangovich. But it was tough to tell. Either way, Jonas Siegenthal would have been credited with the assist. But unfortunately, the Calgary Flames were smart and they challenged the play. And it they, it went back like 30 or so seconds. And it showed that Jesper Boquist was offside. So that goal was waved off and the New Jersey Devils were still down by a goal. And then Yegor Sharangovich again, so he was just basically really out of luck. He would have been credited with another goal, but unfortunately he kicked the puck in. It was redirected off of him and he, he, he didn't move his foot, but still you can't use your skate to use the, to kick the puck into the back of the net. So unfortunately Yegor Sharangovich knew it. The referees, it took them no time flat to make a decision So ultimately, there's the second goal of the game that was waved off for New Jersey Devils, and they were still looking for their first one of the game. So they were still trailing. But, and you guys know the old saying, third time's a charm, and Ryan Graves was able to finally tie the game for New Jersey Devils. So in this game, it was the battle of the two-way matchup. So we saw Ryan Graves get a goal. We saw Dougie Hamilton get a goal. We also saw Nico Heischer once again continue his hot streak. So it's worth mentioning that Nico Heischer is on, is currently on a five-game point streak. He has recorded five goals and four assists in that span of games. So it's nice to see that Nico Heischer still has a hot hand for New Jersey Devils and that he's not only creating for himself but his teammates. It seems like every episode, ever since I made that idiotic comment about Andre Palat being the leader of the team, it seems like Nico Heischer heard my criticism and – I, I just got to say that I was dead wrong. I take everything I said about Nico Heischer uh, being, you know, somewhat of a leader, but not being the team leader. I, I take back everything I said in that regard. Andre Pilat is still leader of this team, but Nico Heischer, no one knows this, this team better than him. So Andre Pilat might bring the veteran experience, but 
Nico Heischer, this is his team, and I take everything that I said back. Now, we'll talk about that a little later in the episode. First, I just want to talk about the overall matchup for New Jersey Devils. So it seemed like the New Jersey Devils, they were just struggling to get a shot on goal because they didn't get their first shot on goal well into period number one. So it took them a while to get going in that regard. And then when looking at special teams, in the first three power play opportunities, the New Jersey Devils only had one shot total in that span. So one of the things that I rave about the New Jersey Devils is that even though that the numbers don't show it, I always talk about how their overall game plan for the power play is respectable, but their execution isn't there. That wasn't the case tonight. And on the flip side of that, their penalty kill, which is one of the best in the NHL, wasn't really there tonight either because how did the Calgary Flames get their two goals of the game? Nazem Kadri got a power play goal in period number one. Then Tyler Toffoli got a goal in period number three. So Overall, it was a bit of an uphill battle for New Jersey Devils. And also, they allowed 35 shots on goal. And compared that to themselves, the Devils only had 20 shots on goal. So they got outshot. They were outplayed in special teams. Seems like that it, it took them a while for them to get something cooking. But yet, somehow, some way, they were able to slug their way to a victory. Now, I accredit this to the New Jersey Devils not having played since Saturday because the last team they did play was the Calgary Flames. However, if I, if my memory serves me well, the Calgary Flames played last night at the time it's recording against the New York Islanders. So they were still fresh off of just playing and they had their feet underneath them. But the New Jersey Devils, they, they kind of had a lengthy off period. So maybe they were just a little rusty in that regards. But it's better to do it against the Calgary Flames because they're on a, like, what, five or so losing streak. So... Uh, if this were to happen, thank God it's against the Calgary Flames because uh, a team like the Edmonton Oilers, like I just mentioned, they would have blown the the door wide open against the New Jersey Devils. But that's beside the point. Let's talk about the goaltending for New Jersey Devils because we saw Vitek Vanacek once again in between the pipes for New Jersey Devils. Now, in the previous episode, I talked about Mackenzie Blackwood's injury situation. And if you missed the episode or if you've been living under a rock, Mackenzie Blackwood is going to be out for an extended period of time due to an MCL sprain. Now, I said in the previous episode that the average recovery process for something like that is usually six weeks. However, Ryan Novozinski is saying that the New Jersey Devils are uh, releasing that Mackenzie Blackwood might be out at minimum three weeks. So he might be back sooner in that regards. I'm not going to bank on it. So I'd say just to be conservative, Mackenzie Blackwood is going to be out anywhere from three to seven weeks. And I talked about that kind of puts the New Jersey Devils in a vulnerable position because I have trust in VTech Vanacek, but in terms of the players behind them, I'm a little iffy in that regards. Well, we got some more news about the New Jersey Devils goalie situation. And unfortunately it's not good. Jonathan Bernier revealed to Ryan Novozinski that he got hurt during training camp. So his timeline of returning at around American Thanksgiving time, I don't think that that's going to happen either. So it just seems like when it comes to goalies, the New Jersey Devils can never catch a break. So get used to it being the VTech Vanacek and the Akira Schmidt show. Now, here's the thing. I said early on in the episode that the New Jersey Devils have games against the Ottawa Senators, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Montreal Canadiens. So if they're smart, which they have been doing the last few weeks or so, I would gen genuinely think about putting Akira Schmidt in one or two of those matchups just to get his feet wet. So that way he could get accustomed to the NHL once again, because you're going against teams that let, let, let me just be fair, aren't all that good. I'm not saying that they're easy victories, but the fact of the matter is, and the record shows they're not really the teams that we fear. They're not the teams that we're going to be just going all in on. It's a, these are teams that you can make mistakes and most likely they're not going to come back to bite you similar to this game against the Calgary flames. So the New Jersey devils might not have their best outing, but I still have faith that they could slug it out. So that's my overall thing. Vitek Vanacek, I, I don't want to shift the focus off of him. He played phenomenal in net for New Jersey Devils. Once again, making great A saves. It seems like every episode that Vitek Vanacek is featured in, I just talk about how clutch he is. And once again, remember when the Calgary Flames pulled their, pulled their goalie, they got an extra attacker, and it seemed like the New Jersey Devils were just struggling to clear the puck. I think they only did it once in that like two or so minute span. And I was a little nervous because I was like, the Calgary Flames have a legitimate chance to tie this game. And once again, it could go into OT, but the New Jersey Devils were just struggling to find the puck and try to get the empty netter goal. But you saw Vitek Vanacek just not letting up and making those great saves 
by keeping the New Jersey Devils in the lead. So Vitek Vanacek, once again, I, I want this to be more of the focus when talking about our goalies, has been phenomenal, and he was definitely a great pickup for Tom Fitzgerald. So I'm excited to see what Vitek Vanacek could do because if he could keep this up throughout the entirety of this year, then th this is a great steal for New Jersey Devils. Vitek Vanacek, I never anticipated for him to be this good, quite honestly. I know it's still early in the season, but he's been phenomenal, and I wish I could find a better adjective to describe it, but – He's been excellent in between the pipes for New Jersey Devils, and I think he's only getting started. So I remember doing a silly season episode saying that maybe Vitek Vanacek could come to New Jersey Devils, and that actually came into fruition. And I said, like, while he doesn't have the most experience, I still think that would be a very good pickup for New Jersey. And right now he's proved me right. So Vitek Vanacek, I have no problem with him being the starting goalie. Obviously, that's not how I really wanted it to go down because – He's kind of the starting goalie by default since Mackenzie Blackwood is out. But we'll talk about uh, my overall opinions about Mackenzie Blackwood and his future with the organization once he gets closer to returning. But before we continue with today's episode, I want to bring you guys the first live read this morning. And it comes from our friends at Simply Safe. So did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award-winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. So I highly recommend getting Simply Safe because what you see doesn't just happen in home alone, it happens in real life. So you need protection of your house, especially around the holiday season. So in an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to say big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. And now, the second live read, it's been a while since I've done two live reads in an episode, comes from our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sport, betting info, stats, and news analysis this season get all the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports we've got it all at betonline.net did you see that astros fan who bet like so much money for the astros to win the world series and he won like 75 million dollars that's impressive but please don't do that and if you love sports podcasts you can find those at bet online as well we're always the fastest easy way to get your betting fix head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the transaction bet online where the game starts Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, so let's switch the subject and let's talk from goalies to now our forwards and also our defensemen. So let's talk about the offensive punch for the New Jersey Devils. So the one of the things I said early on in the episode was that the New Jersey Devils were kind of struggling in their power play. Yes, they were able to get a power play goal, but the Calgary Flames kind of threw them a bone because they put New Jersey in, on the five-on-three advantage. I was like, there is no way possible that the New Jersey Devils don't score in this sort of aspect, just because they've been struggling all night, and I'm just like, they got to capitalize on this, get something going, and Dougie Hamilton was able to get the power play goal. So shout-out to Dougie Hamilton, but in order, and that's how the New Jersey Devils took the lead. But once again, I want to talk about Ryan Graves, and I don't want to talk about his game-tying goal per se. I just want to talk about Ryan Graves, the player, because – He's tops in the league in plus minus. He's not just tops on the New Jersey Devils. He's tops in the NHL right now. And if you need reference, Ryan Graves got his third goal of the season already. And we're just 13 games into the new year. And last year he had six goals. So he's well on the pace to break that wide open. So one of the things I talked about for Ryan Graves, and I also mentioned Yoda Siegethaler a little earlier in the episode when I thought, he was the one who scored the first unofficial goal for New Jersey Devils that was eventually waved off by Jesper Boquist being offside. One of the things I was talking about for Jonas Siegenthal and Ryan Graves is that I want to see them just develop a little bit more of a shot. I want them to just have a little bit more of an offensive punch. And I'm not saying that they need to go out and give me 15 to 20 goals. That's not what I'm expecting from them. But it would be nice if they got anywhere from like 7 to 10 goals per year just so that the New Jersey Devils just have that extra firepower on the defensive end, because let's face it, Damon Severson has has taken a couple steps back. We saw that on, on the game on Saturday against the Calgary Flames when he was benched uh, as the game progressed because he wasn't really playing all that well. Or a couple games ago, 
uh, I think against the Edmonton Oilers, in fact, in, in which he and Brendan Smith weren't uh, doing too well in their passing game. And it resulted in the Edmonton Oilers getting turnovers from the New Jersey Devils and giving them more offensive looks. So that's the one thing that I see from Ryan Grace, and it's the overall improvement. And so one of the things I talked about a couple episodes ago with James Nichols when he appeared on the show not too long ago, I said, if we're debating who should stay for New Jersey Devils on the defensive side of things, because we do have to factor in Shimon the Mets. He might be ready for the NHL come next year. In fact, I think he definitely will be. Then you got to factor in Luke Hughes after he's done with his season at the University of Michigan and he signs his entry-level deal with the Devils. That's something you need to take into consideration. So it's basically like, who's going to go for New Jersey Devils? And a lot of people were saying Ryan Graves. And I'm saying that would be a huge mistake because – like I just said, Ryan Graves is tops in the league at this very moment Moment in plus minus. Ryan Graves has been very effective for the New Jersey Devils. And like I said, last year, he scored six goals. This season already, he has three. And his plus minus is plus 12. He's being very effective out there. And we rave about John Marino and his overall production, and rightfully so. John Marino has done a great job on the defensive side of things for the New Jersey Devils. He's definitely one of the factors as to why the New Jersey Devils have won 10 of their last 11 games. But let's not sleep on Ryan Graves and his overall impact because it's one of the reasons why I gave Ryan nickname Ryan Graves the nickname Silent But Deadly Ninja just because his impact is there, but we don't really talk about it. He falls under the radar. I was talking to the guys of Locked on Avalanche about that just because I love Ryan Graves. I love what he brings to the table. And I think between him and Damon Severson, Ryan Graves is going to come at a very cheaper penny. So we can extend them similar to how we extended Jonas Siegenthaler, which is maybe you sign them for anywhere from three to five years and the money isn't really that expensive because we got Jonas Siegenthaler for what, like five more seasons? And it's actually a very friendly deal. It's not like we had to break the bank for Jonas Siegenthaler. And Jonas Siegenthaler believes in the system for New Jersey Devils because we're utilizing him correctly. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about Ryan Graves. I didn't want to talk about his game tying goal because while it was important, I think there's something bigger in, in regards to Ryan Graves. And we already know what Dougie Hamilton brings to the table, so I'm glad that Dougie Hamilton was able to get the power play goal, albeit the Devils were on the five-on-three advantage. So that was to be expected, but still, a goal is a goal, and and Dougie Hamilton is definitely being very effective out there. Brat was also able to get a point, so once again, Brat is back on his uh, point kind of thing, uh, just trying to rack up a point per game. And now let's talk about Nico Heischer, because he was the one who was able to get the game-winning goal and who was and who had the assist? Dougie Hamilton. So Nico Heischer, once again, he has what five goals, four assists in this five point streak span. So Nico Heischer has been playing phenomenal. It, it's I, I always just run out of things to how to describe Nico Heischer and what he brings to the table. But I think Nico Heischer is putting a lot of people on notice, and his overall game this season has been very impressive. And uh, it's one of the things that I've just been talking about the last few episodes is that it's not just his offensive game, it's his defense too. But we don't really talk about it because we're just seeing the magic happen before our eyes in terms of his stick handling ability, him setting up his teammates, him scoring. But Nico Keisha has actually been doing very phenomenal on the defensive side of things as well. That's why I'm including him in this two-way discussion because that's what overall helped the New Jersey Devils. So my, my buddies over at Pucks and Pitchforks, they asked a Twitter account by the name of Evolving Wild about like, you know, Nico Keisha and his overall uh, game on the defensive side of things. They said, what do the defensive numbers look like so far for Nico Keisha? Evolving Wild said, I'd say Keisha has been slightly better defensively than Kale McCarr this season, but it's still way too early to say anything meaningful. So basically, guys... Nico Heischer, even though he was drafted before Kale McCarr, obviously, because Nico Heischer was the first overall pick, I know it's still early in the season, like that account says, because they look at uh, advanced analytics and also like what Nico Heischer is doing on the defensive side of things. But the fact that Nico Heischer, in terms of defense, is doing better than Kale McCarr and also on the offensive side of things as well, you know, people are starting to say that it wasn't a mistake to draft Nico Heischer number one back in 2017. He's been playing phenomenal and i just want to give credit where credit is due and my sincere apologies to nico heischer if i ever doubted him now let's compare the overall stats and i'll give you guys my final letter grade for new jersey devils so shots on goal differential i talked about this being a, a kind of a big factor the devils were outshot by the calgary flames 35 to 20 and remember prior to that game against the edmonton oilers 
the New Jersey Devils had not allowed no more than 25 shots on goal. So once again, the Devils were just struggling for the first like period or so to get any meaningful shots off. That's why they didn't score anything in period number one, but they turned it around in period number two. So, you know, the fact that they were outshot by the Flames in that regards and still came away with the win, not their best effort, but still able to uh, make something out of it. Face-off percentage, 51% to 49% in favor of the New Jersey Devils. Power play. Once again, the, the Devils just struggled on special teams in this game. Usually when their power play isn't all that effective or good, usually we can sleep at night knowing that they have a very respectable penalty kill, but that's how the Calgary Flames got uh, a couple of their uh, – got two of their goals. They they capitalized on two power play opportunities out of four attempts, and then the New Jersey Devils one for five in their power play opportunities. But remember, it was on the five on three. Hits 27 to 21 in favor of the Flames. Blocks 18 to nine in favor of the Flames. Giveaways, Devils led in that department seven to five. So – if I had to give the New Jersey Devils a letter grade, if they didn't win the game, it would be anywhere like from the C to the C minus range, because let's face it, that was a very sloppy game for New Jersey. But since they came away with the win, since they showed fight, since they made period number two, their period, there's a sense I thought I'd never say in a while. I'm actually going to give them, I'll, I'll be a little harsh. I'll give them a B minus because the thing is like they set the bar so high and, you know, when you don't really reach that height of expectations, usually it can result in more disappointment. But it was still a good game and it wasn't their best showing. But the win is the most important thing when looking at this. And also, I want to give a shout out to Tomas Tatar, because according to Christy Flannery from the Hockey Riders, Tomas Tatar has five assists in his last five games. So early on this season, we were talking about how Tomas Tatar sometimes is a non-factor out there. The fact that he's registered an assist in his last five or so games, I think he, it deserves a shout out. So let me know what you guys think about the overall effort from the New Jersey Devils in this matchup. What do you think of my letter grade? What do you think about their overall uh, just mentality moving forward? Because once again, we got the Ottawa Senators, then we got the Arizona Coyotes, then we got the Montreal Canadiens. So it's very possible. I'm just putting that out there. It's very possible that the New Jersey Devils can extend their win streak to 10 games, but let's crawl before we walk. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the goalie situation, and we'll see if a lot of our players can maintain this consistency going forward. But like I said, guys, seven wins. Devils haven't done that since 2011. So it's been over 10 years. Can't believe 2011 was 10 plus years ago already. Seems like it was just a few years ago, but digressing a little bit, it's been over 10 years since the New Jersey Devils have done what they've done so far. And let's just hope they, they can maintain it going forward. So as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.